So, uh, thank you so much. Today we are having the uh, data science director and the analytics director of Chipstead. Mm -hmm. I think I pronounced it correctly, yes. finally. <laughs> it's Tim Van Kastelt, that is from Netherlands. It's that kind. Uh, Chipstead is not no Chipstead, but Chipstead is a big company. I mean, you, are, you have InfoJobs, uh, you have uh, Photocasa, you have many other things. Uh, what else do you have? We have uh, marketplaces in 30 different countries, mm -hmm. and we have uh, a lot of uh, newspaper me media houses in uh, Norway and Sweden. Wonderful. Yes, and uh, I'm one of the one of the data science managers there. Uh -huh. So we have a uh, uh, central pr product and technology organization, uh, which is spread over Barcelona, London, uh, also Istanbul. Wonderful. How did you land there? Me, personally? Yeah, you personally, because you come from Netherlands, you have been working in public, I guess, tell us about you. I, uh, I have a background in applied machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a PhD in uh, uh, smart home uh, solutions, uh, so human behavior algorithms in, um, in, in smart homes. And um, I worked for a while in, the, in an R&D organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, where we um, were building uh, solutions for smart homes and smart cities. And um, there I saw the challenge of uh, doing research in an industry organization. And uh, I wanted to work in an environment where uh, they were using the data science model. So where we have a more integrated uh, sort of solution so that uh, your research is more tightly coupled to the development. The data science model does that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started looking around uh, for that and uh, I ended up at Chipset. Wow! So, yeah, Chipset at the time, they, this is about two, three years ago, they were building up a central organization to, uh, to yeah, become more data driven as an organization. And uh, basically, what we're doing today is uh, together with the local organizations, build solutions uh, that we can roll out to different marketplaces and media houses across mm -hmm. the organization. Data science probably now is in the hype. Mm -hmm. This hype cycle or not. Or maybe not, maybe it's just a starting, then it's going to be bigger and bigger. And bigger. How do you see that? How do you see that in, in Spain, in all the markets that you are? How do you see the field? Um, yeah, I think, I think the, the word data science, it's uh, like it's 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 a buzzword that mm -hmm. that is being used uh, as a, at the moment as a, as a solution to everything, right? And uh, in practice, what you see is that data science is part of the work that needs to be done to roll out certain solutions, especially in, in data-driven products. Uh, I mean, there are other buzzwords uh, coming up, like machine learning has been becoming more popular, but also artificial intelligence is now the big word that's also up and coming. I think re reality will catch up with, uh, with, with with what that word actually means for our organization. So mm -hmm. now there's a lot of buzz, but uh, over time it's, it's going to be more clear about what is the actual value that data science uh, offers. And I think that's already visible in, in companies today. Tell us about uh, what do you do, because we always Everybody says that the science and so on. But we think about Google or Facebook or Airbnb and these huge things and so on. How is reality? How is day to day life? What are the projects that uh, you work in that are really interesting? Uh, yeah, the team ID is called the user modeling team. Uh -huh. uh, basically, we uh, take behavioral data of our users from mm -hmm. our websites. And uh, we predict attributes of our users using machine learning. Now, that means that what the users see and attributes yeah, the, the, means. The behavior is, is what users see. So, a page view on our website is, is one uh, behavioral observation. Uh -huh. And an attribute uh, about the user could be, for example, uh, the gender or the age of the user. Mm -hmm. um, so, the models uh, that we build are able to predict. Mm -hmm. uh, that based on the behavior, uh, for example, if you browse in a particular category on a, on a marketplace site uh, predominantly, then that is a, can be a strong indicator mm -hmm. of, uh, of your gender. 
And uh, that information is in turn used in targeted advertising, which means the advertising that is shown to the user is more relevant mm -hmm. and therefore more valuable, and that is for us a way to, uh, to make revenue. Oh, wonderful. I'm sure that you are full of success stories. <laughs> Tell us some of your success stories. What is this thing that data science contributed in info jobs or cars or all your websites that you manage? Right. I think one of the biggest challenges that we what we faced was with one of our prediction models that uh, that wasn't performing as uh, as well as we, we hoped it would uh, perform. And it's it's a classic uh, data science uh, story. Example, uh, like often, what happens is you know a lot of work goes into preparing the data, making sure the data is available, it's of high quality, things like that. And once that's done, often the data science work can be quite straightforward. You try a few models, and then you bring it into production, and uh, that way it's uh, it's rolled out. In uh, in this particular case, the the model we learned uh, after a few experiments was not performing as we wanted and uh, we, uh, we, invested a lot. we invested about like a week or two of, uh, of experimentation to figure out what is like the, the, the best model mm -hmm. that, uh, that would be useful. And there are quite a few factors to take into account there. Of course, performance is, is great, but uh, we have a production environment where um, if we uh, go outside of the toolbox that that production environment offers. Uh, it can take a lot of maintenance costs mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to keep that up and running. Uh, and in this case, the model that performed best was uh, XGBoost, which was not part of the, the, the toolkit uh, mm -hmm. that, we, uh, that we were used to using. Um, so there is a trade-off there. Like, do we go outside of the, the box for, uh, for the sake of performance, or do we uh, stick to the, the less performing models. And we decided to, to go with XGBoost and we, we put the effort to bring it into production and to mm -hmm. get it up and running. And uh, now it's running uh, on a daily basis uh, its jobs and uh, performing them very well. So that's uh, something that, yeah, end to end, it, uh, it had some uh, some hard work, but uh, in the end, uh, it's able to provide predictions for many of our sets uh, today. So it's, it's so did you measure the bottom line? Do you measure the impact that these models have in the business, or do you do any of these? Definitely, yeah. We we the predictions that we uh, deliver, mm -hmm. we provide them to our advertisement department, and we have a very close collaboration with them to uh, yeah, and, and hear feedback from them regularly on how the impact that things make. So that, that is part of the equation. Fantastic. Some of our students are concerned about. Uh, do I have to be a geek right. uh, to go into this business or I can be a business guy and I uh, can contribute and they're going to accept me or uh, what is this or if I'm not absolutely technical, there's no way for me to enter. Uh, how do you think about that? Is there a space for the completely non-geeky <laughs> guys in this world? Yeah, in in the work that we do, I, I, I as I manage the team, I, I, I have to keep an eye out the skill sets that uh, that we have in the different uh, in, among the different team members, and the way I see it, there are three categories of skills basically. One is uh, engineering, so really being able to put things in production, uh, proper coding skills, things like that. Uh, the second one is uh, more around data science, uh, but also things like experimentation, having a good understanding of the models, why does one model work better than the other, uh, things like that. And then the third area is uh, what I call storytelling. Well, and storytelling is basically things like you know, if, you, if you have uh, results in the form of metrics, like performance uh, or uh, area that we heard or things like that, um, how do you translate to that to something that is actionable in the organization? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I think, a skill that is uh, the, the least geeky of them all. <laughs> okay. um, so, and really requires uh, some cross-disciplinary uh, skills to be able to do that, mm -hmm. to understand not just the number side of it, but uh, how you can translate this to make it actionable in the organization. One last question. <laughs> you 
have to give an advice to our students about what to do with their careers, how they can manage and so on, which would be the advice that you will give them? Study a lot of Python to be a geeky in AWS, or what would be your advice? When you're a student, you you have still quite some time. I mean, this is why you go uh, to an education, to go in depth. Uh, so my advice would be to, during your education, really take that time to understand things very fundamentally. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're working in a project, uh, it's often much more difficult to, to really find the time to go in depth. Uh, there's often an assumption that you have mm -hmm. already a lot of fundamental knowledge. And uh, as you work, your experience helps you to, to, to grow on that. Um, so my advice would be don't rush through the homework to you know, just get the grade, but really spend time to understand things well. Um, and uh, in a nutshell, don't become a toolbox data scientist that is only able to you know, take some data, throw some models at it in a kind of trial and error manner and uh, just go with the highest performance, but uh, really understand why does something work well and something else does not work well uh, from a more theoretical point of view and uh, as a framework as a whole. So thank you so much and thank you so much for being with us here in Isade. And well, we hope that we can work with it in the coming years. Great. Thank Thanks you a lot. Thank Thanks you. A lot.